Freezy? So I have this, uh... Gave you this number for emergencies. Yeah, it's an emergency, trust me. It just showed up. Face the raven, ooh. Could that necklace come into play now? It's a tattoo. It's very boring. Tattoo. Wait, look, just, just keep watching. No one saw me all day. Oh, man. Oh, that's not boring. You've been right, Con. Huh? What con? <laughs> Amnesia drug. Love is fit. Okay. Yes. Okay, let's do this thing. Oh. Stop the counter. Whatever they're using, it only hides the secret. Oh. <laughs> it prevents you from noticing there's even something missing. Let's call it a misdirection circuit. Ah, I like that. Whoa. <laughs> oh yes. I see it. You? I do. <laughs> Jump scare. <laughs> Alarm system. Name, species, and case for asylum, quick as you like. Asylum. The reason uh -huh. you're here. The reason you need sanctuary. Okay. How about that? Why didn't they use the protocol? Yeah, of course. Of course he does. No. Now that you've told him. Maisie. Oh my god. Ishilda. We met. Yes, I know. It's in my diaries. I lost track of you. In the early 1800s, I wondered if you were... Oh, no. I let him know I was okay. Yeah, there. I saw you. <laughs> no, I got your attention. Oh. Someone in this place is in control of a quantum shade. Ah. Oh. Could be her, though. Hey, back up, back up. When you are recognized that smell. Oh, she's been up to some things. Hey. What did you say? Oh, Jadoon? I mean, there was a dead lady, but Mayor is a title. I give myself a title for the same reason you do, Doctor. Ah. Something to live up to. Difficult, isn't it? Some of your greatest enemies are within a few feet of you. Uh. As far as you're concerned, this is the most dangerous street in London. Kind of like That's Hogwarts. Amazing. Now, can we skip to the... Diagon Alley, sorry. Hey! Look at this. I suppose before she broke out. Oh, it's her. It's her. She's found at the entrance to the street. Seems she was knocked to the cobblestones. Seems, you've sentenced. Yeah, I was gonna say. To death, yet you don't. Do know you have exactly proof? What's going on? He was found over the body. Oh, come on. People were angry. The female Janice is psychic. One face sees into the future. The other walks behind her into the past. Past. I think we saw her son outside. Yeah. No. That was a girl. Face the Raven, eh? Ominous, to say the least. Don't run, stay with her. Two ways to survive a quantum shade. Give it to someone shade else. Master removes the chronolock. We pass it on. Or you can give it to someone else. Give it, you can just... No, you can't just push it on someone, it's not that simple. They have to... It has to be taken willingly. Right. Death's already locked in. Okay, Clara, don't even think about pass it. it on, but come on, cheat it. I don't like it, I don't like it. Love the lighting here. Look at his hair light. I'm under the mayor's personal protection and it's absolute, apparently. Mm. This is Doctor 101. We're behind time. We get all of the aliens on our side in the next Lara, place. careful. And then we reveal I've got the corner lock, not you, and boom, buy ourselves some time to find the right color. I don't like it. Would never let you, do that. you trusted us to save you, so trust us. Come on. Yeah, but he's a good guy. He doesn't want to pass it on either, right? Okay. Mm. Once we turn on each other in here, yeah. it. I might as well be back in a war zone. Everyone here is weird around us because of Rixie, but not you. Because she's got the thing. You she could look into the past. Her, like you're confused, like you're curious. No, I'm trying, but I can't see it. She's I masking can't it? see it because it involves you. 
when I look at you. I can't tell your past from your future and mm. you're so very much of both. Oh my god. Whoa, love that. She couldn't just ask you here. She had to bring you here. She needed a mystery. You can never resist a mystery. Yeah. She's afraid. Afraid of what? It looks like medical data. But it can't be. She's dead. She isn't breathing. This thing is a stasis pod. Oh, she's, she's alive. Dead. Alive. It was a trap, she's essentially, alive. to get him here. Get her out of there. It put some kind of clamp on him. She'll be perfectly fine in a few moments. I assure you. She was expecting all of this. Key, you know? I don't want your TARDIS. It's a teleport bracelet. What? I'll give you time to say goodbye, don't worry. Whoa. No one will be hurt. Where are you sending me? I do as they tell me and the street is safe. They? they? One more thing. Someone who needs the doctor, or wants a doctor. There it is, what making... Is In your terms, my last will and testament. No. No. No, 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 no. No, you didn't. Go on then. Take it off. She can't. Carla, you didn't. Exactly did Rob say. He said the death is locked in. You can pass it on, but. But what? Cannot escape it. But you can't cheat it altogether. Oh my god, is this it? We can fix this. We always fix it. No. But you can. I'll show you and all your funny little friends to the whole laughing world. Oh. I'll bring unit. I'll bring the Zygons. Give me a minute. I'll bring the Daleks and the Cybermen. You will save Clara, and you will do it now. Oh or God. Or I will rain hell on you for the rest of time. I can do whatever the hell I like. You've read the stories. You know who I am. And in all of that time, did you ever hear anything about anyone who stopped me? The doctor is no longer here. You are stuck with me. Whoa. And I will end you everything you love. Doctor, for God's sake, will you stop? No! Look at him. Look at him. He's just... Ugh. This is my fault. This is my choice. I let you get reckless. Why? Why should I be so reckless? You're reckless all the bloody time. Why can't I be like you? Carla, there's nothing special about me. I am nothing, but I'm less breakable than you. I should have taken care of you. I never asked you to. You shouldn't have to ask. If you feel guilty about this, even for one minute, I... This is crazy. <laughs> it's happening. You're gonna be alone now. And you're very bad at that. Uh? You're gonna be furious, and you're gonna be sad. But listen to me. Don't let this change you. No, listen. Whatever happens next, Wherever she is sending you, I know what you're capable of. You will not insult my memory. There will be no revenge. I will die, and no one else here or anywhere will suffer. What about me? If there's something I could do about that, I would. I guess we're both just gonna have to be brave. Whoa. Yeah. Bloodshot eyes. Is there a twist? Is there one final twist or something? It's a bit different though, isn't it? Ah, I didn't think this I'm sorry, Doctor. could have been the episode I lose her, but... I truly am. But is she gone gone for sure? She was saving you. I was lost a long time ago. She was saving you. I've done my best. Yeah. But I strongly advise you to keep out of my way. Oh. Now who's they? And they... The confession dial, right? That was an important bit.
Hmm. All right, folks. Episode ten: Face the Raven. Um. Yeah. Yeah. You know, immediate thoughts. Uh. And if I'm being completely honest, it's it's a bit of a strange feeling. You know, especially given the fact that it legitimately looks like I've just lost, uh, Clara. That I've just seen perhaps the last of Jenna Coleman. But of course, you know, let me also establish that I'm not entirely convinced either that this is the end of it. You know, I'm not I'm not quite sure just yet, you know, especially since I do have two more episodes. Right? I mean, the setup here is kind of alluding to something much larger at play, something much, much more grand. And yeah, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, that you know, in an episode. Um, in a crucial uh, and important episode of Doctor Who, of uh, Capaldi's run, of, uh, of course, Jenna Coleman's run, y- you see that essentially by the end of it, it just really felt like there's just something much larger at play now. Um, and I don't know, I'm, does it kind of undercut the impact of um, any potential Clara departure? Actually, here's the thing, you know, before I move any further, um, I'm going to go ahead and assume that indeed that is her actual death right there, right? It looks like she died. (laughs) I mean, you know, it's pretty clear cut. And of course, the presentation itself, you know, if that ends up being a fake out, then, you know, that's something that I am going to be quite critical of, of course, because, you know, the presentation itself is really quite definitive, you know. So, yeah, perhaps indeed that is the last time uh, I see Jenna Coleman. Um, and you know, isn't it funny that even though I've been going on and on about the death flags throughout these episodes, throughout, uh, series nine, um, this still, this still kind of surprised me. It did. It did. You know, I just, I don't know. Um, maybe a a bit of that is on me for just kind of assuming that she is such a major aspect of Capaldi's run, uh, and so important to his character that, you know, I just kind of assumed any potential departure. And I, I did kind of feel like this is the departure series for her, I just kind of felt like, yeah, it'll be like a, I don't know, maybe, you know, it'll go into the final two episodes of the series. Um, But, you know, that being said, it's not, this isn't something entirely new or unique, right? Um, You know, if you kind of go back to Rory and Amy's departure, um, yeah, that didn't, that didn't happen in the finale of that uh, series. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it didn't. But, you know, also on, on that front, this is essentially the first on-screen death I've seen, I've experienced in terms of, you know, a, a companion figure in, in the series. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I kind of learned that indeed, you know, now Rory has passed on. And then a few years later, uh, uh, not Clara, sorry, uh, Amy passes on as well, you know, uh, based on the gravestones. Um, but, you know, specifically being on screen, this is a rare thing, really rare thing. Um, and you know, it's essentially as definitive as it gets, you know, there's no cop-outs, you know, let's, uh, you know, I say that, but let's see, let's see if that truly is the last I see of Clara. Going back to my initial point, yeah, you know, let's treat this as her actual death because it is, they show us, right? It it builds up to it. It shows us earlier in the episode how exactly, uh, the Raven functions and how it takes a life, right? That's really quite effective. As it shows the older couple, the older man um, who took the ration, uh, the medical ration, I believe. Uh, and yeah, and, you know, this place is built on rules. And then, of course, you've got the return of Maisie uh, in that role as me, essentially kind of holding that fragile piece together, right? It's, it's it, you know, they establish it as something that is one step, one step from absolute chaos, right? Given the interesting collection of beings of aliens that kind of come together in this uh living arrangement that they have and of course i'll get into that aspect of this episode as well you know it's essentially the first half an hour you know 35 uh 36 ish minutes um that is a focus of this episode right and i enjoyed it i really really quite enjoyed that aspect of this episode you know clearly taking a bit of inspiration from diagon alley from you know harry potter perhaps um it is really quite fantastical isn't it but yeah, circling back to the initial point about, you know, the couple and the older man losing his life, you know, it's it's effective, really quite effective because, you know, it, it sets it up nicely. It shows us, the audience, that, okay, this man is dead. This happened. The raven came for him. He had the he had the chronolock 
um, tattoo or tattoo if you ask uh, Peter Capaldi how, how charming is that that's just so damn charming but yeah you know they made it clear this is it this man died now you know us the audience knows oh okay if this plays out if this follows through and you know she's not saved somehow this is how it's going to play right it is and listen you know I must admit you saw you know I was a little bit in denial almost because it didn't I kept kind of assuming, okay, something is going to happen. I think I, I kind of even said, oh, okay, surely there might be a twist. Is there going to be a twist? Because I'm just kind of, I don't know. Uh, I just kind of thought, you know, based on past close run-ins with uh, death itself, I just thought maybe, you know, this might be one final close call perhaps before maybe ultimately um, she is going to face uh, face the music essentially in the in the in the final few episodes. But no, no, it became really clear that she's about to die here. You know, there is no twist. There is no cliffhanger. There's nothing but an actual legitimate death. On-screen death um, for Jenna Coleman's Clara. Um, So yeah, you know, let's treat it in that fashion as of this point. You know, of course, I've got two episodes left to go. Let's see if there's anything, anything related to Clara. Listen, I'm sure there might be... Uh, or not might be, I'm sure there's going to be mentions of Clara, right? Because you've got two full episodes and a lot that needs to be covered because the mystery, the 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 big or the larger mystery at play here is really quite fascinating and intriguing, enticing um, to think about. See, earlier I said that it's a bit of a strange feeling and one of the reasons for that is because I find myself a bit more focused on this mystery that's uh, being set up, you know, as in, you know, who's this ominous day? Um, and you know, how come they need his confession dialed and that's of Gallifrey uh, origin, right? Because he is a time Lord. So, you know, who needs that specifically? Um, or how exactly does that come into play? And, you know, how come me is asking for it? Um, I mean, she's clearly been asked to get that from him, right? From them, right? The they, the ominous day that they kind of speak of a few times near the conclusion of this episode. Listen, I think the smart money is got to be the Time Lords, right? Gallifrey. I think this potentially could be the return uh, that, they've hint- that they've hinted at uh, at the end of the last series, right? Um, uh, that they've hinted at in the Day of the Doctor. Um, so, and also, you know, in the beginning of this series as well. And again, through the introduction of this uh, confession dial as well earlier on. And, uh, you know, fantastic two-partner, this series opener. So, yeah, if you ask me my first pick in terms of who they might be, I'm going to take the safer and the smart money on this one. And I'll, I'll go ahead and say Time Lords, Gallifrey. And if indeed that is the case, uh, clearly they got in contact with me, Maisie's me, that is. And, yeah, you know, they kind of put it in a, in a tough situation, tough spot, right? They said, okay, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess did they did they actually mention if they threatened to expose the street or I don't know um, take it out or something? Um, I mean, they they certainly mentioned that in exchange for protection, you know, you get us the doctor. You know, they certainly implied that, and then of course to lure the doctor into the street, into this whole thing, and to you know ultimately uh, trap him uh, and send him off by the end of it. Yeah, you know, she kind of had to build or construct this enticing mystery because, of you know, of course, all of us know. And as um, that character, the Janice, I believe, the female Janice specifically is really quite intriguing in this aspect or in this situation because because of, you know, their capacity or their capabilities, really special capabilities to, you know, look into the future and look into the past. Of course, sometimes you run into someone that is really quite unique. Um, in terms of time and the passage of time. And, you know, uh, of course, I'm speaking of someone like the doctor. But yeah, around that time, the doctor begins to, you know, figure out that, oh, okay, okay, it's it's not about Riggsy. It's about me. All of this is a setup to get me here, right? And listen, it's, it's effective. You know, she makes it happen. Me makes it happen. I mean, listen, by the end of it, it's clear that she would have removed the lock, the chrono lock from Riggsy's body. Right. Um, But, you know, up until that point, you know, I was under the impression that she's risking the life of this young man. That she's being so nonchalant about this just to get the doctor here. 
right? But I believe her. You know, I think it's pretty clear that she didn't actually want anyone to get hurt in terms of, you know, luring the doctor here. You know, they're just some of the pieces of the puzzle that are essentially required to pull the doctor in, right? Um, so she thought she had it all, you know, planned out. She thought she had it all figured out. She's like, okay, you know, all of this is going to happen and then I'll remove the chrono lock. Simple as that, you know, no one's going to get hurt. Uh, and this young man's going to go back to his family. And, and you know, I've got to say, I really enjoyed Rigsy coming back into this. And of course, a bit of time has passed and he's got a child now, right? So of course that plays, uh, that plays a part, right? That certainly plays a part in all of this in terms of Clara ultimately um, deciding to take on that risk, I suppose, to take on that, um, you know, chrono lock. Uh, I mean, you know, that is kind of just touching it on the surface level. I'll get into, I'll get into it. Uh, you know, just give me a second. Um, give me a minute, like the doctor said, as he's going in on uh, me a little bit later, right? The fury of the doctor, the wrath of the doctor is on full display. Capaldi is frightening in that moment. And you know, the thing that really sells it as well is Maisie. Look at her reaction. Look at her Look at her expression. She sold the hell out of that. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. I'm so happy that Maisie had this prolonged stay on Doctor Who, even though I know, you know, she doesn't come back after this series. Um, it's been so fantastic. Like I said all that time ago, I think it's been six years at this point, six plus years at this point. You know, back around the time I started Rose, uh, Series 1, Episode 1, yeah, you know, I knew about Maisie being a part of Doctor Who. And again, that was at the height of uh, Game of Thrones. Um, so yeah, you know, it's been thoroughly satisfying to finally uh, kind of see her appearances on the show. And also in terms of goodbyes, is that the last time I see Maisie or her character me in Series 9, right? Still two more episodes to go. A lot can happen. A lot can happen, especially in, especially in like the grand finale. I mean, of course, there's a chance I might get a mention of her in the next episode right after this, right? Because now it, it's quite the cliffhanger. Because the next time I see the Doctor, I'll know, I'll know who it was, right? So that's exciting, you know? It's really, really quite exciting. But also, you know, there, it's that strange feeling of, okay, I'm really quite excited about this aspect of it. But, you know, Clara just died. I love Clara. I love Jenna Coleman. I've loved Jenna Coleman as Clara since the early days. I mean, yes, it took some time for them to find uh, the right lane for this character, right? You know, there's a bit of stumbling going on earlier on in her run. Um, and, you know, that's not Jenna Coleman's fault. You know, I'm not pinning that on Jenna Coleman because Jenna Coleman once again shows that if she's given the right material, she'll shine like a star. As she does, as she is once again the perfect screen partner for the, uh, for the incredible for the exceptional Peter Capaldi, who once again just absolutely floors me in this episode. This is a master of his craft. He truly is a master of his craft. And, you know, his performances as the Doctor, uh, especially some of these more recent ones as well, I mean, these Peter Capaldi performances have given me a whole new level of appreciation for the man, for the actor, right? And the thing is, I knew, I knew about Peter Capaldi before the doctor, before he was the doctor, I knew that he's this phenomenal actor. But, you know, seeing it, experiencing it, to see this man on screen, to take over that screen. I mean, it's been an absolute treat to experience Peter Capaldi in this role. Uh, and, you know, thankfully, I still have another full series of it, right? Um, and, I mean, you know, now that Clara is gone, right? As of this point, she is gone. She's dead. I might, I, I might get to see some tremendous acting, if that's even possible. You know, an, another level of tremendous acting from Peter Capaldi. Because, you know, right now it's, it's kind of, it's kind of in the middle right now. It's kind of tough to say how he'll react to this. But of course, Clara tried her absolute best, absolute best to, you know, kind of calm him down, to make him understand that it's okay. You don't need to burn everything to the ground because of this. You don't need to take revenge on my behalf. Right? She tried, and of course, I'll get into all of that. Um, but yeah, there's a possibility that I might see new heights, new heights from uh, Peter Capaldi. But, you know, as someone who really appreciates the craft, uh, you know, filmmaking, of acting, and everything that goes into it, um, and, you know, the actors themselves being so crucial to a lot of it, it's been an absolute treat to watch Peter Capaldi do his thing as the doctor. 
you know, those close-ups, those close-ups are just everything. I mean, this actor is capable of delivering entire dialogue with just one facial expression. There is just so much going on there. Those expressions, those eyes, they just do so much. This man is a storyteller through and through. That, that's for damn sure. Uh, like I said earlier, a master of his craft. And it is heartbreaking to look into the man's eyes. You see that this man is absolutely breaking apart on the inside. Um, you know, there's so much sorrow in those eyes. So much sadness in those eyes. And you know, it's not just that. It's not just that. I see him go through it. Right? Like I said, I see the wrath of the doctor. The fury of the doctor. There's moments you'll see him standing in the corner. After, you know, he kind of learns about this, after, the, you know, the big moment happens and he finds out that indeed Clara took it. Uh, how about the how about the look on his face? That look of shock, absolute shock, right? And then, you know, that moment of panic, that moment of just the doctor not knowing the next step. He's lost. You know, he's standing in the corner and his eyes are just darting around the room. You simply do not get to see the doctor like that often. You just don't. To not have an idea to not to not know how to approach this because ultimately deep inside you get the answer you see it on his face the moment he finds out that Clara took it then and there it's it's done it's a wrap he knows it's a wrap and that's the difference right the doctor yes he he he, he can be reckless he is reckless and he is able to take those risks because he's a bit he's built a bit tougher essentially right he told Clara as much you know, there's nothing special about me, but I just don't break easily. Something along those lines, right? I felt that he knew then and there that this is it, this is done and dusted. And, you know, kind of going back to the beginning of that point, I was trying to say that that's one of the differences, right? Yes, Clara can take these risks and she has been taking these risks for some time now. You know, it's been really clear for us, the audience, for some time now. Uh, you know, it's it's a fine line. It's a fine line. And, you know, of course, the death flags um, that I mentioned uh, there's a plethora of those death flags uh, leading up to this. But, you know, again, I, I guess I have to give them credit for this. It still kind of caught me by surprise. I, I was not expecting her to die here in the end of this episode. Uh, but, listen, you know, I say that maybe I was kind of in denial as well. Because the moment, the moment, you know, she pulls Riggsy aside and, you know, she's trying to convince him to hand it over, right? To, you know, to kind of shift it over. Um, I knew, I knew it's, it's just not going to be as simple as, oh, okay, yeah, you know, I'm protected because lady me or mayor me promised me protection and, you know, it'll be as simple as that. I knew, you know, once she takes it over, it's about to be a really tricky situation. So, you know, deep inside, even I kind of, I was dreading it, you know, because then you start calculating the, the amount of time that's left, right? At that point in my mind, I am thinking, okay, oh, 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 oh hold on. Is this it? Is this like the beginning of the end? You know, maybe this, you know, this thing that she takes on um, might, you know, might lead to her death. But again, you know, I was kind of just assuming it'll play into the next episode and perhaps into the finale as well, right? Again, it doesn't have to go into the finale to the final episode of the series, but I just felt that, you know, given her um, role in Capaldi's Doctor's, um, you know, character progression and arc, I just felt that, yeah, maybe for her specifically, for Clara, it might actually be a final episode goodbye or something. So yeah, I find it kind of interesting that I did have a few denial moments. Uh, you know, almost kind of like it's the first stage, isn't it? It's the first thing I kind of have to get over because it took me right till the end of the episode almost, right, right near the conclusion of the episode to really comprehend that, okay, hold on, she's actually gone. She actually just died. You know, nothing's, nothing's about to happen here. There's no twist. Yeah, you know, the final scene... I mean, the lead up to it is something I really, really quite appreciated. I did. But I've got to say, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of those multiple cuts that they gave me uh, of her letting out that scream. And of course, you know, I think it's an interesting choice to not let us hear that scream that she lets out. I think I think that is effective. I think that that functions. But yeah, I don't know about these multiple cuts that they decided on, you know, uh, you know, showing it to us from different angles, from multiple angles. I don't know. I don't know if that I don't know if that did it for me specifically, right? Again, it's just my opinion. But the actual final moments are really quite interesting uh, in how they're framed, in how they're staged, actually. You know, Clara's got her hands out. Uh, it really kind of mimics the regeneration of the doctors, doesn't it? Um, but you know, instead of gold, it regeneration energy, 
uh, and you know that golden energy that I've seen Matt Smith kind of expel earlier in his run. I mean, in, in his first appearance, actually, not first appearance, second appearance in. Um, oh God, I, I forgot the name of his first ever episode, uh, full episode, uh, series five, episode one. Um, God damn it. I mean, it's it's one of the most memorable series openers and uh, names. For some reason, it's kind of escaping me at the moment. But yeah, you know, I see him expel that golden energy from time to time throughout that episode. But here you see Clara expel, um, you know, that the, the dark shadow, right? And that, of course, ties back to something uh, Lady Me said back in that episode, right? The girl who lived or the woman who lived, you know, ultimately or in the end, she'll blow away like smoke. Right? She said that to him in the chimney. She, she said that to the doctor. Uh, how many Claras have you lost? But yeah, you know, I'm still kind of trying to tackle this uh, feeling that I have at the moment. You know, I always felt that I'd be really, really quite sad to see Clara go, to see Jenna Coleman go, right? Any potential departure, uh, separation, uh, death scene, and in this case, an on-screen death, I just always felt that it would just break me, absolutely break me. And listen, I was really quite upset, of course, um, especially inside as they are given plenty of time, just those two, right, doing their thing. And I really think it's one of the more effective or greatest newfound strengths of this doctor's tenure, right? The ability to slow things down and let the characters, right, let the characters' interactions kind of guide how things happen next or how things play out next. You know, I saw I saw this uh, in the Zygon inversion as well, right? In that incredible prolonged 10-minute segment, 10 to 12-minute segment. You see that again at this point. You know, it doesn't get bombastic near the conclusion, but instead it slows down. It slows down and makes it really quite intimate. Listen, this, this, this aspect of it was clear right since day one. Uh, Deep Breath, his first full episode. You see the dramatic shift, that it is open to slowing it all down, that it is open to giving it some breathing space. And of course, earlier I mentioned uh, Jenna Coleman's performance in this. Um, yes, yes, you know, it's one of the standouts, of course, um, of her tenure as companion, as Clara. And it was so effective in how she kind of goes through all of these emotions throughout the episode. She's exhilarated. You know, there's joy, there's outrage, there's grief. And then there's resolve, there's strength, that, there's bravery, all of that. And Jenna Coleman really, really put on a show, I think. Uh, and I'm, I'm so happy she was given uh, this kind of material in her potential last appearance. But, you know, circling back to my initial point about um, how I'm feeling at the moment about losing Clara and Jenna Coleman. Yeah, you know, of course, I was choked up, um, you know, through those really intimate moments, uh, you know, moments of these close friends uh, trying to, you know, kind of navigate these final moments and how each one of them, or at least in the doctor's case, is going to react to this, is going to move on from this, right? The next steps. But yeah, her actually walking out to her death and then actually dying, it's sad and it, it absolutely sucked to, you know, to see that. But yeah, it didn't hit me as as hard as I thought it would. And of course, that is not a blanket statement. I'm not saying the, the scene itself or her departure is just, I don't know, ineffective or something. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm saying for me, right? It's a subjective thing, I suppose. I'm sure for many, for many of you, it's an absolutely crushing moment, right? I, I am. I am heartbroken. It's just that I, I, I thought I'd be a bit more upset, you know? So it's kind of interesting to navigate my own thoughts at the moment. Um, maybe, you know, maybe the inevitability of this um, didn't quite pack the punch. I, I believe I even mentioned that it's actually a little too on the nose at, at one point a few episodes ago that, okay, you know, they're really kind of hinting at her departure, that it's coming, it's coming. You know, they, they'll say things that are so hard to miss in terms of, oh, God, don't say that, don't say that. It's like it's like textbook death flag, isn't it? And, you know, uh, I guess that necklace finally comes into play, right? Uh, they focus on it and, yeah, it's a raven, right? And you see the doctor even looks at it so yeah, I suppose maybe I am kind of answering my own question at this point. Essentially, yeah, it might have been because I was just really, really expecting it to happen. It was almost like a foregone conclusion, right? That yeah, clearly, you know, they're about to kill her off, um, you know, really soon. The only thing is I just kind of expected it to be a part of the final two episodes. 
And the thing is, it is kind of by design, isn't it? You know, this acceptance of it. She's defiant in kind of owning up to this, taking responsibility for this. You know, she's not, she's not, you don't see any panicking. I mean, maybe you see a bit of panic for sure, right? Because she's kind of baffled. She's like, hold on. This is not how it usually goes. The doctor and I always figured this out. Always. Right? You know, there's that really fantastic bit of subtle uh, acting there. You know, her expressions. Um, she's actually legitimately puzzled and baffled. She's like, huh, but this this can't be this can't be it. So so the fact that there's this prolonged scene that is like 10 minutes, I believe, and there's this acceptance there, right? I, I suppose that also plays a part, right? And I think that's by design. And I think, you know, it really kind of um it, it just really showcases Clara in a brilliant light. You know, dignified. It's a dignified ending. She's brave in the face of death. But, you know, that being said, she she does tell the doctor, you know, this is as brave as I can be, you know, so you kind of have to let me go out there now. You know, I can't face it in here. Um, And I, I do hope that you are proud of me, that you can be proud of me. But, and, you know, of course, once again, I do have to mention Peter Capaldi as he is standing in that corner and Clara is asking the question, oh, I, you know, we can fix it, right? And, you know, it shows us Peter Capaldi, it shows us the doctor, you know, that's the subtle smile and then nod, you know, like shaking his head. Oh, my God. You know, sometimes that's all you need. You know, that really hurt me as well. That made me really quite sad um, to have the doctor um, kind of reply in that manner. And, you know, the thing is, they kind of hinted at this right from the beginning of the episode as well. Right. If you look at Riggsy's situation, right, he's trying to be nice. He's getting the cards out. And, um, you know, yeah, I find it funny that Riggsy didn't like that. You know, the doctor is finally actually referring to him as his actual name because, you know, he immediately understood the connotation of that. He's like, oh, this is almost kind of like really too respectful. It's kind of this official capacity. Now the doctor is becoming too serious for me. You know, go back to calling me local knowledge or pudding brain. You see, it was a half-hearted, uh, all right, let's do this. Let's go. Let's do this thing. As he turns around, you know, he turns uh, he turns away from Riggsy and Clara. And then, you know, he takes a moment and he's like, all right, let's do this. You know, you just felt it. He just felt that it's not the same energy because he he understood the concept of this, the chronolock. But then, of course, even though he knew he can't do anything in that desperate attempt, he kind of lashes out at me. Me as in uh, Maisie's character. I spoke of this earlier on, but my goodness. Oh, <laughs> Peter Capaldi, frightening in that moment. The doctor is not here anymore. You have to deal with me. You're stuck with me. Oh, my God. And you see that it really kind of hurts and terrifies the outgoing Clara. It breaks her heart to see him kind of, you know, almost immediately abandon all of that growth that he's experienced uh, in their time together, right? In terms of how he deals with this, how he, in terms of how much he's changed to then almost immediately because of this possibility of this incident, all of that just falling apart like a house of cards. And, you know, the, again, the wrath of the doctor coming out once again, kind of reminiscent of the waters of Mars, right? Tenant in that moment. I could do whatever the hell I like. You've heard the stories. You've read the stories. And, you know, this is uh, Capaldi, not Tenant. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's interesting setup because now I am going to see if he's going to be able to keep his promise um to clara to respect her memory right because she you know it wasn't really a request i mean she phrases it in a manner that it's more so i'm giving you i'm giving you this order as a friend as a close friend and she is in a position to be able to do that right uh i think i think there's nothing wrong with her you know speaking to him in that manner because they are close friends they mean so much to each other easier said than done You'll, you'll see in those subtle expressions in, or changes in expressions that the doctor knows it'll, it'll be difficult. It'll be really difficult for him to, to not feel a certain type of way about this. And, you know, I mentioned that Clara is uh, really quite put together in that moment. She digs deep. She's defiant. She accepted all responsibility for this, that she got herself into this situation. And that, you know, maybe it was a long time coming. You know, maybe, maybe I'm kind of overthinking this. You know, there's even this notion of the suicidal tendencies uh, since she kind of lost Danny Pink. Right? I mean, I don't know if I'm overthinking it because she's almost kind of saying it. She does say it. There's this line of dialogue, isn't there? Um... 
I think it was something like, um, maybe this is why I kept taking all those stupid risks, right? Kept pushing it more and more every single time. And then, of course, as expected, the doctor feels really quite responsible for how it all kind of played out altogether. He feels responsible for letting it get to this point, right? Clara or his companions are his responsibility. So he straight out just said, it's my fault. He believes that it's it's his fault for letting it get to this point, right? That I let you get reckless, you know, that I should have taken care of you, even if you didn't ask me to, right? She tells him almost immediately, I didn't ask you to take care of me, right? But again, I, I understand his point, right? He has a, a care of duty or is it the duty of care? Yeah, I believe, yeah, I usually kind of flip those accidentally. And, you know, I said that she's defiant and accepting, really quite accepting of this situation that she lands herself in. You know, at one point she even said, you know, why shouldn't I be reckless? You're reckless all the time, right? So why can't I be like you? You know, why can't I be like the doctor? And of course, you know, that's a major component of this series uh, of Clara's progression, Right, that she is becoming more and more like the doctor, or she became addicted to this lifestyle, to the lifestyle of the doctor, to being in the position of the doctor, right? Uh, I mean, you know, there's there's actual episodes that are putting her in that position, and of course, on that note, it's clearly by design that they do bring Rigsy back into this because that was the episode that she was essentially Doctor Clara. She was acting doctor, and that was flatline, right? The first time I get to see Rigsy. And see, once it becomes really clear to her that, okay, this is it, it's locked in, you know, death is absolute at this point, you see that everything beyond that point becomes really quite selfless, really selfless. It's all about making sure that these two men do not feel guilty one bit about this, right? Of course, it'll be really, really tough for the doctor to not feel guilty, and of course, for Rigsby as well. And of course, that being said, you know, he's he's still going to feel really quite guilty about this. Of course, it's only natural, it's human nature right? You know, he'll have those moments of just kind of thinking about it from time to time, you know, how it all played out, that he lost a good person, a person that was a friend, that he considered a friend. And of course, you know, in terms of callbacks, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful one, again, to the day of the doctor, right? There she was speaking to Matt Smith's doctor, uh, but, you know, here it's Capaldi, and she tells him the same thing, right? Don't be a warrior, be a doctor. And she understands she's been around long enough. I mean, this is essentially the longest serving companion, isn't it? Since I started Doctor Who. It's got to be, right? So even that in itself, uh, her relation to the Doctor, I think it's even more, I don't know, not intimate, not, not intimate in the romantic sense, but intimate in the in the sense that, yeah, she, she is able to kind of say these things, you know, demand these things of him, right? I'm giving you an order as a, as a close friend. Uh, I mean, I mean, Clara or Jenna Coleman has, you know, she's been through the Matt Smith era. She she even met Tennant's doctor. And of course, you know, the war doctor, uh, John Hurt. And then, of course, Peter Capaldi's doctor. But yeah, you know, all of that being said, of course, of course, I expect the doctor to struggle for a time at least. For sure. You know, that I think that's the only natural progression of this. It's not going to be easy for him to deal with this. It's not going to be easy for him to be alone. And it's not going to be easy for him to have another companion after this i mean i know i know factually it happens because it continues of course but you know i if you ask me i do want to see capaldi by himself for a bit i I don't want to see a companion come on immediately in the next series i don't i really don't you know i kind of want to see him travel around for a bit by himself you know there's a lot to process there is though of course you know i've got two episodes left in this series so maybe he'll do a lot of that in these next two episodes now, in terms of Clara and, you know, this whole idea of her becoming so reckless, so reckless in these, uh, you know, um, I guess, uh, past few months with the doctor, I think it's a mix of two things here, right? It's this reckless abandon and her compassion. I think it's a mix of those two things that ultimately kind of led to her downfall, right? And these and these things, you know, both these things I just mentioned, compassion and recklessness, um, these are doctor... I don't know, doctor-esque qualities. You know, I, I do think it is her compassion that makes her tell the doctor to not seek vengeance on her behalf or for her in her memory. And I think it is because of the compassion that she takes that from Rigsby, takes it on herself, right? Because, you know, there's that moment she she sees Rigsby on the phone, 
and she can overhear the conversation, right? She understands, you know, she knows, oh no, I cannot allow this. No, there's got to be some, there's got to be something that can be done here because, you know, that child, that baby cannot lose its father. And, you know, she makes that point to Rigsby. And, you know, I think the doctor is the same. He knew that that child needs its father. So I don't think it's just because of reckless abandon that she ends up in this position. I mean, it certainly plays a major part. I just kind of want to make sure I, you know, voice my opinion on the compassionate side as well. You know, I think it is a mix of the two. And, you know, it kind of goes back to that opening two-parter, right? The the conversation that the doctor and Davros have about compassion. Compassion is wrong. And he tells, he, he tells the doctor as much, doesn't he? That, you know, it, it'll be your undoing. Something along those lines. And yes, you know, I do understand that you know, there's an argument to be made here that perhaps it wasn't a completely noble sacrifice, you know, given that she firmly believed that uh, Mayor Me or uh, Lady Me and her, you know, assurance, um, her absolute protection is going to, I don't know, kick in. That she'll be fine. That she'll be completely fine. And, you know, that she's being really quite clever. She'll, she's kind of gaming the system. Right, she's trying to outsmart them, and she she's open about that. She tells Rigsby as much, doesn't she? So yes, her hubris does play uh, a major part in this uh, departure. It does, you know. She was kind of feeling invincible that you know she can play with fire time and time again, and she'll escape it, you know, without getting burned. I mean, ultimately, it's an oversight. It's it's a silly mistake, even, you know, to to kind of rush into this to to not really you know, step back and kind of take a moment to really understand the connotations of the things that Rump, Rump is saying to her, right? She kind of had to be reminded of it as the doctor tells her or asked her, okay, tell me exactly what Rump said to you, right? I think he said, you can pass it on, but death is absolute. Death is certain sooner or later, right? You cannot cheat it altogether. And it really, really stings that ultimately she didn't really have to do anything. It would have been fine. Rigsby would have been fine. But again, you know, hindsight. They don't know this. The doctor doesn't know this. Clara doesn't know this. So she does take initiative. She she wants to make that choice, right? Again, she believes she'll be fine, but there is an, there is an element of risk nonetheless. She does take it from Rigsby, right? In an attempt to make sure that Rigsby is fine and he does go home. But yeah, this idea of her reckless attitude, right? You see that it kind of reiterates that in this episode as well, you know, leading up to those final moments. You go you go to the beginning of the episode, right? Just the, the really wholesome opening. Them coming back from this place, this adventure they just had. And, you know, the way she's describing it, you see that she played a major part in the thing they kind of get up to. And you see the doctor is impressed. You know, he he's like looking at her and he's got that look on his face. And she tells him, oh, you're impressed, aren't you? You know, there's even moments like her just kind of hanging out of the TARDIS and enjoying it a little too much, right? Living on the edge a bit too much for their liking, you know, both Riggsy and the Doctor. You know, the Doctor said it's kind of becoming an ongoing problem at this point. And of course, you know, a bit of a callback to the day of the Doctor, uh, Matt Smith hanging out of the TARDIS. And that's the thing, isn't it? You know, she herself also felt that it is essentially the logical conclusion of this. That sooner or later, you know, sooner or later, it's going to catch up to me. That she understood that it is coming at some point. It's almost as if her time, Clara's time, was up a long time ago. And then it just kind of took some time for her number to come up. So yeah, you know, all of that being said, I think it's still important to note that, you know, she dies here. She she put something into motion here initially because, you know, she wanted to secure the life and future of someone she considers a friend, Rigsby, right? Someone who has uh, a lot to live for back home. You know, maybe, maybe that's another thing that's... Um, kind of in her mind you know maybe she's thinking I don't have as much to lose as Rigsby and you know in terms of Rigsby being used as a scapegoat in this situation yeah it's interesting you know I think there is a bit of an allegory uh, at play here in terms of um, you know false accusations um, you know racial profiling even I don't know I don't know you know I was getting a bit of that in this especially because you know if you go back to the story in Flatline right it, it does kind of add up doesn't it and it's really quite an interesting conversation, isn't it, between the Doctor and Rump. There you get a clear understanding of exactly how, you know, they perceive this, how he perceives this. Um, you know, if it's not the human, then, you know, the finger pointing begins. Then, you know, neighbor starts to suspect neighbor. 
and you know this fragile piece that they do have and that piece begins to fall apart really quick right it breaks apart almost instantly if that if that begins to happen and you know the one essentially the one big thing that is kind of keeping them in check is you know this idea of the chrono lock or the fear of the quantum shade it's the only thing that's kind of keeping everyone in check but yeah you know rump is completely open to sacrificing this one human right just so you know this um carefully cultivated community doesn't fall apart and finally i do kind of want to touch up on you know the really interesting concept of this episode uh the hidden streets right the secret pockets of alien life that exist right here on earth in you know in london in, in the heart of london um and you know they've got these really fantastic concepts like the misdirection circuit or you've been retconned you know, and that whole segment of them actually kind of looking for these streets, for these trap streets, it actually kind of reminded me of National Treasure, the first one, uh, the Nicolas Cage film. Uh, it's great fun. It's just one of those uh, comfort films, for me at least. You know, um, it's kind of similar to Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one. It's just a fantastic, um, pitch-perfect action-adventure film, isn't it? Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, you know, I, I have similar thoughts towards National Treasure. And then, of course, you've got stuff like The Mummy from 1999 as well. You know, these types of films are just timeless. I, I just feel like I go back to them so many times. And every single time, I have a great time. But, you know, I love that moment as they do enter the street, the, you know, proper. They go in there in the heart of those streets. Uh, love that crane shot. You know, it's Rigsby uh, and the Doctor. Oh, no, no, sorry, not Rigsby. It's uh, Mayor Me and the Doctor, right? They're speaking. And then, of course, you know, Rigsby and Clara uh closely follow right behind them i love that crane shot you know as they enter and then of course the crane rises up and then you get a nice look at it from overhead it's a beautiful design uh, sorry it's beautiful production design and set design um you know again from a production standpoint it's it's really quite impressive so yeah it's a lot of really fun stuff earlier on isn't it uh now you know i think it could have been interesting if they actually had their actual shapes or forms as aliens you know um, not Z I, I almost said the one alien that's not in there is Zygons. You know, imagine you have Cybermen walking around. You've got uh, Ood, you've got um, Jadun, and I mean a lot of them or most of them are <laughs> beings that do consider the Doctor their enemy, right? But you know these specific aliens, perhaps the ones that are in the in these streets as refugees, um, yeah, you know they're just trying to survive. I think. You know, there's not that type of animosity. The only animosity that, that they do have is towards uh, Rigsby because he's been falsely flagged as the person who killed one of their own. But yeah, I think that should do it for this one, folks. It's a long one. I'm looking at the runtime here. Uh, but it deserves to be. It does. And I, I don't think I'm done yet uh, with my thoughts on Clara. You know, let's see how these final two episodes play out. And then, you know, uh, perhaps in the finale, episode 12, I'll have uh, my final closing thoughts about Clara. Once I know for sure if she's like gone gone and if you know there's no more appearances uh by jenna coleman in any capacity then you know maybe i'll get into some of my favorite performances uh some of my favorite moments of um clara as a companion but yeah to wrap it up i think that ultimately yeah it's a nice slow emotional beautifully pitched goodbye to clara i thought jenna coleman is given um every chance here to shine to go out on a high note she's given some fantastic material and i noticed the name of the writer um female writer i'm not sure if i've seen that name before it could be a newcomer but yeah you know i think uh, i think they've done a, a good job here i think they've done a great job here actually but yeah if you enjoyed that consider dropping a like consider dropping some comments give me your thoughts um if you're interested in um timer based full length or perhaps early access to the next episode right now consider checking out the patreon page and the links to that are in the description and the pinned comment. Also links to social media, things like Instagram and Twitter, if that's your thing. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me, folks. And thank you for your time because time is precious. It really is. And I do hope to see you again soon for the penultimate episode of Series 9. Let's see how the Doctor handles this. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's going to be fascinating. But yeah, until then, take it easy.